Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with IRAC Veteran 8888. I want to make a quick follow-up video on the Grand Power uh, Strybog SP9A3. Uh, you guys recall in our initial video we were running this thing suppressed and it was running quite well. Um, everything was going just fine. Uh, I spoke to Tim at Military Arms Channel and a couple of other content creators that have been having a couple of issues out of the Strybog and after speaking to Tim uh, he mentioned to me that running the gun unsuppressed and with certain types of ammunition, he was experiencing a considerable amount of malfunctions. Uh, you know with the SP9A3, they improved the magazines. Uh, so we now have metal feed lips on the magazines. So that's an improvement. And this is a roller blowback uh, variant. So not a traditional blowback like the original SP9A1, uh, you know, standard Strybog. So what I'm gonna do here, I've got um, some magazines loaded up. I have not shot this gun unsuppressed uh, yet. I figured we would just go ahead and film it and we'll see if we experience any malfunctions running it unsuppressed. Um, I've been told that uh, there are some varying specs of roller cams, okay? And that those cam specs can kind of be all over the board a little bit. Now, I'm talking to Tim right now through text message. Uh, he intends on making another video uh, about the SB9 A3. There's a recall on them going on, uh, you know, company-wide for that particular gun, but I wanted to tell you what Tim told me. Uh, he said, this is what's going on. The roller pin slams into the receiver, which causes it to ping, okay? Eventually it gets so bad that the gun is delayed too much, which causes malfunctions. When you send the gun in, they replace the parts and they machine the peened out area, okay? Uh, so that's apparently what they're doing for the fix there. They're remedying the situation. It's not like it's some unknown issue. I just simply want to see if our A3 experiences the same stoppages uh, that Tim's did and many other users have experienced. So um, I just want to get to the bottom and see if we experience the same malfunction. All right, I've got steel cased ammo and brass case, and then the older mags and the newer gen magazines. Um, this is some Norma 115 grain uh, range and training ammunition, okay? And we're running unsuppressed, gonna run her loud. And let's see if we experience any malfunctions. You see what I see, here we go. Let's just see what happens. That's looking good. Okay. Gen 2 style uh, steel lined magazine or steel lip magazine. 115 grain brass case ammunition. Unsuppressed. Failure to feed. Clear. Bolt lock to the rear. One failure to feed. Steel case ammo, 115 grain tool ammo. And uh, I would run more ammunition today, guys. I, I know um, some of Tim's stoppages were probably presented over course of fire, over, you know, a lot more uh, rounds. Uh, we're a little low on nine millimeter ammo, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? So let's see, uh, we got two mags of steel case ammo. Um, and I believe this is the ammunition that was probably the most likely to cause the issues with some of the steel case. We'll see. Failure to feed. Double feed. Failure to feed, double feed. I 
I know what Chad's doing. I know Chad like, like a book. He is going to put the steel case ammo in the Gen 2 mag to see if this is related to the magazine and not to the platform. So we'll go ahead and let him do that. I'll continue assessing this magazine. So two double feeds with the steel case so far with the Gen 1 magazines. And we're about to test it, obviously, here uh, with the Gen 2 magazine. Boy, sucker's accurate, though. I can tell you that much. Boy, she's, uh, ha! man, this thing's pitting the ace. This sucker is ridiculously accurate. Double feed. So it's quite clear that we're experiencing double feeds with the Gen 1 uh, magazines. Go ahead and see if I can get through the rest of the magazine. Make sure that that mag is seated correctly. Okay. All right, that wasn't a failure to feed, but the bolt didn't even pick uh, the the didn't pick up the last round in the magazine. So it's quite clear with the steel case ammo in the Gen One magazine, uh, we're we're certainly experiencing some issues. A <laughs> poor gopher, <laughs> right in the face. All right, so just so you see here while he's finishing up. That's the Gen 1 magazine, non-metal lined. No cracks or splits, everything looks good there. And then the Gen 2 magazine is our metal feed lip magazine. You can see molded in there. Well, not really molded in, but anyway. All right, steel case ammo out of the Gen 2 magazine in the Strybog. And uh, I will say this, guys. I absolutely love this gun. It, it, ah, this thing is such a smooth shooter, really accurate. Um, there's always going to be some teething problems, folks, when it comes to this sort of stuff. So let's see if the steel case chokes with the Gen 2 magazine. Dude, ha! wow. So, the question we have to ask ourselves, I believe Tim that he had issues, of course, and we had issues. We were able to replicate the issues that Tim uh, mentioned in his original video. It seems that the Gen 2 magazines tend to be a little bit better on the reliability spectrum uh, with both types of ammunition. And it's not to say that this gun is not one of the ones that has the affected uh, roller spec issue. Uh, we'll probably send this gun back to Grand Power, have them check it out and uh, give it a, a once over and make sure everything's good to go. One thing I will say about them though, they've, they've done a great job of addressing the issues. Uh, just like when you know, some of the Gem 1s were having a few teething issues, um, they were able to get those uh, rolling changes made and get those customers made whole. Um, you know, I, I think that what we tend to kind of run into in the gun industry, especially you look at these YouTubers and all that are getting stuff really early, sometimes even before it's released, um, you run into situations where, of course, we're going to find some little gremlins that uh, surface, okay? And those gremlins will come to, come to light, and then we figure them out. And usually, uh, usually, the companies will uh, bend over backwards to make things right and correct the issues and move forward with it. So I'll send this gun back to Grand Power so they can give it a once over. Um, man, <laughs> what an accurate PCC. Wow, this thing's fantastic. Especially when you look at the cost of the BNTs. Uh, I know I mentioned that in our original video, but when you look at the cost of a BNT compared to this, I, I'm just not sure I could justify ponying up the extra money for the BNT. Man, this is great. So it'll be really interesting to see how that pans out. I wanted to make this video. I promised Tim that I would do it uh, because I wanted to see if we could replicate the same issues that he had. 
So there you go, take that for what you will. I know it's only four mags, we're really low on ammo, guys. We're trying to kind of you know, make it last and uh, ration our ammo a little bit. Expect more videos, many more on the way. Guys, thank you so very much for the support. Those of you who purchase man cans, t-shirts over on the website, um, you know, those of you who support us on Patreon, thank you so very much for the support. And uh, guys, many more videos on the way. We'll see you next time.